I grew up in a small town of 7,000 inhabitants at the time when I was there. Now it's even less than half of it. Macedonia is one of the poorest countries in Europe. When I moved to Sweden, I felt like I was in a totally different world. Everything was fancy and uh, automated. I was feeling lost and tiny in this modern, developed country. I came here for a better future. I left my family and came here without knowing anyone and with no money. I must admit that it was scary, but I had built enough confidence during my childhood to be able to tell myself, you're gonna figure it out, Anna. You're gonna find a way out. New language, new culture, new system. I didn't know how to buy a bus ticket. Everything here was cash-free. Everything was done through applications. It was so new to me. Something that just came to my mind, I tried sushi for the first time here. In my little hometown, there is no place where you can buy sushi, avocado and mango. In the beginning, I was an out there, living with families, taking care of kids while learning Swedish. So one day they came and told me that we're gonna have sushi for dinner. And uh, I just told them, okay, cool. But in myself, I was thinking, damn, it's gonna be so embarrassing. I've never eaten with chopsticks in my life. So how am I gonna tell them that? I was thinking, should I tell them that I'm sick and skip the dinner? But at the same time, what if they bring me out in public to eat sushi? I thought, okay, in public it will be even more embarrassing. So I better face it now. When we are young, we tend to pay too much attention and care too much about what other people think about us. But now, for example, I don't care. I'm not ashamed to say what I know and what I don't know. By then, I was because people would laugh at me, but now I just understand that the people that are were laughing at me cannot understand me because they have never been in my shoes and there is nothing embarrassing with it. <laughs> anyway, to go back to the sushi dinner, as soon as I left the baby to the mom, I went back to my room and I wrote on uh, YouTube my life's mentor and I wrote how to eat with chopsticks. So I took uh, two pencils and a rubber and I started practicing how to eat with chopsticks. <laughs> So you can guess what I was doing until it was time for dinner. And I didn't tell them anything before the dinner. When the dinner was finished and after two glasses of wine, I told them about my thoughts that day and how I was feeling, like that I was feeling uncomfortable showing and sharing that I, I've never eaten with chopsticks before. But now when I just think of it, I'm just laughing. There were so many challenges that I faced, especially the first two, three years. But I'm grateful for every single one of them uh, because they taught me so many life lessons and I got so much experience that made me a totally different person. You might be thinking, uh, why are you telling us those life stories? What does it have to do with trading? Well, that's because I believe that the emotional resilience that we have to build as traders is not coming from trading, but from life experiences. As a trader, the ability to cope with stress, anxiety, and emotional ups and downs is essential. If you haven't been through things in life, you might find the losing streak too overwhelming and stressful and give up. Trading is giving a lot of pressure and is a very stressful profession. That's why building mental toughness is very important so that you can be resilient and focused even during uh, tough times. Different life events are helping us build resilience, but at the same time also creating beliefs uh, that might stop us from progressing. Most of the times we're not aware of those beliefs and thoughts that are stopping us. You might think there is no way that I have a belief that I'm not aware of that is stopping me from progressing. But what if I told you that I can give you thousands of examples that might surprise you? Have you ever asked yourself how you think and feel about money? You have for sure heard that you're the average of the five people that you hang out with. And why is that? Because people who have high influence on you on your, in our lives are the people who help us integrate those beliefs. It can be parents, friends, teachers, and not many people talk about early programming, but I will be bringing up this topic since I know that many limiting beliefs come from the programming and hopefully it will that inspire more people to reflect uh, on the ways they think and try to reprogram themselves. 
it's really hard to change. That's why so many people remain the same. I still struggle a lot with some changes that I want to make. Um, if I go some time without reminding myself and reflecting, I easily go back to my old habits and routines. That's why I have an accountability partner and now as well an accountability group. By giving them guidelines for growth, I have to do the exercises myself first and reflect. And that way they keep me accountable not to forget what are the most important things for me and uh, my future self. I know many of you won't get support for the journey you're into from parents, partners, and uh, this makes the journey even more difficult. But you better avoid and don't talk about this topic with people that don't understand you and support you. You don't want to make it more difficult than it is. From family members, I did not have support from my parents. They were discouraging me and telling me to follow the standard path, which is good education, good job, and that's it. The only one who was supporting me was my little sister. So when I would blow an account and feel down and low, <laughs> I would call her or chat with her, telling her not to tell anyone. She was telling me, don't worry as everything else that you imagined and made happen, you will make it happen with trading as well. Just keep believing in yourself. And that's what, what I'm gonna tell you as well. The most important thing is to believe in yourself. I can't find the right words to express my gratefulness for that because it means a lot. I wanted to do a separate video about it a long time ago when I got a comment from ICT that made me so happy, but time passed and I totally forget about it. I had an intense start of this year, that's why I haven't published a single video since beginning of January. January passed without me noticing it. First, I went to see my family for Christmas, after that I had a work trip to Turkey and as soon as I was back I had to pack all my stuff since I had to leave my keys for my apartment. I had to hand over the keys on the 31st. And on top of all that, I was working full time with the preference, so there was no time or energy left for YouTube. Currently, I'm homeless for a second time in my life, but not out on the streets, of course. <laughs> the plan is to go to Asia. I will be there and you can expect more vlogs of my life as a digital nomad and trader in Asia. I'm really excited to share this journey with you. So if you don't want to miss out, make sure to hit the subscribe button and I promise you it's going to be fun. Okay, now it's called. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.